for those of you who are not familiar with helmet ventilation, um, the helmet itself has several components. There are the straps here that sit under the arms and prevent the helmet from rising when there's pr um, pressure in it. The next thing to note is that we have inspiratory and expiratory gas supply ports. You can identify these by the air baffles that they have inside. Um, when patients are in these and prone ventilated, sometimes you'll find that one is better than the other in terms of placement of the tubes with the patient's head down. The front of the helmet is round here and you can tell that because of the two ports we have. These ports can be used to place feeding tubes through into the patient to get them outside um, and they have little seals that go in so that when they're not being used for the likes of feeding tubes or um, straws for patients drinking, you know, an extended drinking straw, the bungs should be in place. So the next feature is the free breathe valve. This serves several different functions. Um, most importantly, if the patient starts to feel very claustrophobic or feels that they're going to be sick and you need to get access to the patient without taking the hood off, you can spin this and remove it. You now have free access into the patient's face. You can put a suction in, a suction catheter in, or a yanker in to deal with any secretions or nausea and vomiting. Whilst we've got this off, we'll just demonstrate the other function of this, which is the free breathing. So this is the free breathe valve, valve component, and you can see it has a small toggle switch here on the outer aspect. The switch can the, be gently pulled to the right or released. The importance of this is that when the helmet first goes on, patients will be breathing through the valve which will be open to atmosphere. Once the helmet is attached to the ventilator or CPAP machine, gas pressure will start to develop inside the helmet but will leak through this valve. However, if we press the lever to the side, and you can see here the valve closing, that there is no longer an exit pathway through the valve and the maintained pressure within the helmet keeps the valve shut. But should there be a failure of gas flow and the pressure in the helmet drops, the valve flicks open and the patient is once again free to breathe external room air. This is an important safety feature of the helmet. Having shown the safety features um, intrinsic and the function of the free breathe valve, I'm now just going to reinsert it in the helmet and seal it by turning until it locks. The next features to note on the helmet are the air cushions that we have. There's an air cushion at the top of the helmet that sits at the crown and apex of the patient's head and there is a second air cushion on the inside of the helmet around the neck region. These cushions serve two functions. First of all, by inflating them, you reduce the dead space volume of the helmet, and that in turn reduces the gas flow required to prevent rebreathing. The second function they have is one of comfort, affording cushioning to the patient when they move. I'm now going to demonstrate the filling of the air cushion. We can do this with a catheter tip syringe, however, it's easier and faster to use piped air or oxygen from the wall source. So if we just watch the cushion here, I will just connect this to my wall source of oxygen and we should gradually see the cushion inflate. So I'm now going to demonstrate the last feature of the helmet and that is the neck seal ring. The neck seal ring is designed to sit comfortably around the neck with a good seal on someone with a neck of between 38 and 42 centimetres. If patients with larger necks use this helmet, then it is advisable to trim around one of the lines that you can see on the helmet to make it more comfortable for them. If the seal is too tight, you will start to see some pressure and congestion in the veins of the neck and you may notice that the pace becomes plethoric. Generally speaking, the patient will tell you if they find this too tight. So prior to fitting the helmet, you should release each Velcro, Velcro strap and detach one end of it from the 
base frame. So, in order to place the helmet onto a patient, you require ideally two clinicians. And the clinicians put their thumbs on the outside of the frame and their fingers on the inside of the neck ring and pull the neck ring open to make a large aperture. And we will gently now lower the helmet onto the patient and release the neck seal. So currently the patient is breathing both through the free breathe valve and through both of the gas ports which are currently open to an environment. So next we're going to place our patient onto CPAP. We're going to apply the CPAP valve to the expiratory port of the helmet. I'll just apply a little bit of pressure there. There we are. And then we're going to apply the standard CPAP input to the inspiratory port of the helmet. You can see the helmet is already inflating. So having connected the CPAP to the input, we now check that the free breathe valve is completely closed. We can feel with our hand for gas flow out the exhaust and to double check we press the safety toggle switch for three seconds to completely close the valve. So the next thing to do is to apply the straps finding the optimal comfort for the patient. So Mark, can you lift your left arm up to the side and we'll just lift one strap underneath and feed it through the ring. I'll just tighten the back slightly as well. And on the other side, I'll hold the helmet if you want to put the strap in. So I have my gas supply from the wall and we're gently going to inflate the cushion onto Mark's head. As we said earlier, this just affords some comfort and also reduces some dead space on the helmet. Are you comfortable, Mark? Yep. Excellent. So, in summary, we've talked through the key and essential features of the helmet and we've shown you how to apply it. In the next video, we'll discuss some of the monitoring issues and patient care issues while the helmet's in use and also how to remove the helmet.